in the light, Lord, your armor, Lord God, as Ephesians speaks on by your apostle Paul, that you spoke through, Lord Jesus, to have on the whole armor, Lord God. And but, Lord God, on the inside, as we're walking through the battleground, on the inside, Lord Jesus, as we're walking through warfare, Lord Jesus, on the inside, let our hearts be in love with you. Lord God, let our minds be in love with you. Lord Jesus, we could have on all the armor, we could have the scripture and the knowledge and understanding of the doctrine, but Lord God, if we don't have the love for you, Lord Jesus, then surely it means nothing, Lord God. Hallelujah. To you it means not, and to us we, we see, Lord Jesus, as you show us in your word, Lord God, how we ought to have love for you. Lord God, not to just have the, the outer appearance, Lord Jesus, of the outward adorning that you say, but then the inside not have the love that matches, Lord God. Let us have both equally yoked, Lord Jesus, inside and out, according to your love and your word and your, your measure, Lord God. And we love you, we bless you, Lord God. Bind every evil spirit, Lord Jesus, every principality, every form of witchcraft, every, every form of divination, everything, Lord Jesus, that the children of the devil will try to rise up, Lord God, and Satan will try to come in between the midst of your people, Lord God, expose and we bind every spirit. Lord Jesus, of discord, of division, of unbelief, of, of gossip, of slander, of shedding innocent blood. Let that not be in the midst of me, my house, Lord God, or any of the house of God, Lord Jesus, collectively as one body and individually when we go home, Lord God. Tame our lips, bridle our tongue, Lord God, by the Holy Ghost, Lord Jesus. And only let us have truth of judgment in our heart and our mind, Lord God. Let us not go onto every thought that comes to our mind to speak on it, Lord God. Only that is of you and the Holy Ghost, Lord God, to declare truth and judgment, Lord Jesus, to maintain order, Lord God. Let it be in the godly way by your spirit, let alone, and not by the spirit of our own flesh. Lord God, help us, Lord God, Lord Jesus, to know what thine will is, to walk in it, and our hearts be on fire for you ultimately, Lord Jesus. And in this place of being on fire for you, Lord God, we will find shelter, we will find rest, peace, joy, all things that we yearn for, Lord Jesus, that's within you, and that you will keep us guarded from all the wiles of the devil, Lord Jesus. We thank you and we bless you in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise amen. God. Thank amen. you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for the breakthrough, Lord Jesus. Shift each and every atmosphere. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah, Lord God. Push every spirit of darkness away from the children, Lord God, that are walking in your light. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. So the word, amen, today, Lord willing, scripture, hallelujah, that's I've put together in times past, we'll get to, um, but we're going to start off in Revelations to lay the foundation that we're going to build up off of, amen. Even just speaking of right now, um, of loving the Lord, right? And so... We'll jump into Revelation chapter 3, where the Lord is speaking to the angels of the church, the pastor of the church, the leader of the church, assembly, and Sardis, right, Philadelphia, Laodiceans. And so we're going to go to Revelation 3. I'm going to start off at verse 14 as he speaks to this church right here. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, right, these things saith the Lord, I'm sorry, saith the amen the faithful and true witness the beginning of the creation of god i know thy works that thou art neither cold nor hot i would thou were cold or hot the lord so we pause the lord saying i know that you are neither cold or hot and the lord said i would thou work cold or hot so he's saying, I see, I see where you've gotten to, I see where you're standing, I see where you're at, right? This is a, this is chastisement from the Lord, amen? Who are we to be sons of God that don't receive chastisement? So if we go without chastisement, we are bastards, as the word of God says. We're not his children. What does that mean? When the Lord comes to us and, and, and says something to us that kind of goes against maybe how we're feeling, right? How we're seeing, how we're looking on things. Nevertheless, if it is of the Lord, it's the spirit of chastisement to keep order, to keep instruction, to keep fire, to keep the, the zeal contained in a right balance, all these such things, right? Walking with the Lord, as his spirit says. Amen. If he says and comes and corrects us by his spirit, when the reception of that of the person from the Lord will show a bastard or a son. Amen. The action will show a bastard or a son. If the Lord comes to me and continues to, to show me, to speak to me, to correct me, 
I keep resisting, I keep going, I keep resisting, I keep going and going off, not receiving ultimately the correction and receiving hum and humbling myself, the Lord is saying, you're beginning to be a bastard unto me. You're not my child. For my sheep are my sheep hear my voice and they follow me, right? That that my my sons, my daughters are going to go, amen, with getting a chastisement, amen. And so the Lord says, you're neither hot nor cold. I would thou were cold or hot. This is what the Lord wants. He doesn't want the middle ground from his, his bride. Amen. Verse 16, so then because thou art lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Amen. Because thou sayest, I am rich and increased with goods and have need of nothing and knowest not thou that thou art wretched and miserable, and poor, and blind, and naked, because they're lukewarm. Because of the lukewarm state, they've gotten to this place now that they're, they're wretched, miserable, poor, and blind, and naked, and they don't even know it. And they've increased with good, so it looks like they're blessed, everything is all well, they still have a praise in their mouth, they're still gathering, this is the church, and Laodicea that are professing a godliness, professing works unto the Lord, right? And that they're living to the Lord, but the Lord is saying, but you're not on fire. The Lord is saying, you're not hot. You're not even cold. You're in this middle ground. You think that you have all this blessing and increase and that you can serve me in this form and fashion of your godliness, but not the way that I'm saying, right? That you're not staying. Something's pulled your affection. Something's come and drifted your heart a little bit of strain. It keeps going to where it's getting to this lukewarm state, right? And we can still have a place of, in our heart where we love the Lord. We pray to Him and we get to, but our, something's gotten our affection, right? Something's gotten us over to this lukewarm place. God forbid, amen? Yes. Let God show us, amen, if any of us have gotten to this place that it be far from us, that we humble ourselves, we repent, we receive chastisement, and we push it and keep it moving forward in the Lord. Amen? amen. And I counsel thee, verse 18, I counsel thee to buy of me gold tried in the fire that thou mayest be rich and white raiment, and thou mayest be clothed, and that the shame of thy nakedness do not appear. Amen. This is, we can see this in the spirit, amen, as he's saying that you're miserable, you're blind, you're wretched, you're naked, you don't even know. Amen. And even in the physical, right, that we cover up the nakedness, shamefacedness, amen. And anoint thine eyes with eye salve, that, and thou, that thou mayest see. Verse 19, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Amen. So the Lord, when he comes to us and he deals with us, we don't want to make excuses. We don't want to run from the chastisement, although the flesh wants to. Mm -hmm. The flesh wants to run from the chastisement from the spirit of God. The flesh is always at enmity against the spirit of God working in us and through us consistently. So we already have that thing against us already, which is the flesh, obviously spiritual warfare. But when the Lord comes and chastises us, our flesh don't want to yield to it truthfully it doesn't but nevertheless our love and our fervency and our, our, our zeal and love desire for God inside should override our emotions our feelings our beliefs our settings of how we thought the way would be and right in our own eyes and say Lord I love you I repent right as many as I love I rebuke and chasten the Lord says he says be zealous therefore and repent be zealous in love and, and in good works and in wanting to please the Lord in your heart that you repent and that you turn from it and that you keep going in the order and instruction in the Lord. Amen. What? Maintaining, working out your own salvation with fear and trembling, not, not leaning to your own understanding, coming, seeking counsel, coming and seeking the spirit of God. But then also, if you're just only seeking the spirit of God and you're not seeking counsel, you're not going to and, 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 and speaking to, amen, the appointed leaders, you're operating outside of the spirit of God. You always go to the Lord. He is God. Man is not God. We know that. But when you go and you've been under a church and you're in a church, you are to go in order and operate in an instruction. If you have a disbelief in a, in a doctrine, if you have a disbelief in a feeling of a word that was said or how someone was dressing this way or that way, take it to that person that it may be cleared up. Take it to leadership that it may be cleared up. There are so many times where that, that operation is not ordered. Well, I took it to the Lord, and I'm feeling like he's wanting me to pull away. Well, did you continue in the operation that the Lord instructed in the, in, the, in, the, in the scripture that he said to take it to your brother your sister if you have an odd against them? Did you take it and seek counsel because in the multitude of counsel there is safety? 
And I'm seeing even so much now that in majority of times when there's a division that pops up inside the church, it doesn't get taken in order to deal with it in the leadership. It's just taken to the Lord, it's dealt in isolation, and then pulled away. But if the situation, if the ought, if the, 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 the disbelief or the, or the understanding lack thereof was to be communicated in the order of God, God's light would shine and the spirit and the scriptures would bring the healthy balance to bring the truth and the judgment on any matter. So many times when the order's not carried out, it's just took into the prayer closet, isolation, then pulled away out of the church. So many times that issue, that spirit, that, that understanding or lack thereof, right? The spirit of error would get called out. The, 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 the lie of the devil would get exposed. But when the order is not taken properly, then the, the recourse happens, which is not of the Lord, right? Which is of the wicked one that wants to pull people away and do this and do that. And we see we have to have a zeal for the Lord. That's scripture. But don't let your zeal override the order of God. Don't be so zealous that you can't receive correction from the Lord, from leadership, from any way that God operates, which is in his scripture, which is through the fivefold ministry mainly, right? that you can't receive correction, that you're so zealous that the way that you're seeing it is the way, and that's the way or the highway. Amen? We have to be on guard for these things. We all have to remain humble. I have to remain humble. If there's any, any, anything that would even come up in the future that I lack an understanding to, amen, that God would show me, and I don't see it that way, or it's brought to through the, through the ministry, right, the fivefold ministry, and I lack an understanding to it, I'm not to just do what my flesh wants to do, pull away, just seek the Lord my own and do my own thing and pull my family away and have our own thing going on. No, God never intended for that to happen. God has placed us in a place to have leadership, to have men appointed over us, to give instruction and wisdom that the Spirit of God would give to them instead of only just in the prayer closet. Thank you, Jesus. Amen? Yes. And so I have to take it and walk in the order of God even though it's not comfortable at times. Knowing that my belief, my idea that I'm going to bring to the leadership may be wrong. I may have an understanding completely wrong. But if I'm humble enough to receive correction, if I'm humble enough to say, I don't believe what was taught last week, or I don't believe, I don't, or I just don't see it the way that you're saying it. I, I hear it, but I don't see it, right? I have to be humble enough to take it and to receive correction, chastisement, edification, everything that I need to maintain my spiritual walk and endure with the Lord. Amen. This builds up, the humbleness builds up endurance. You have to be humble to endure. Because if you keep resisting, 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 you're getting proud, proud, proud. You not receive grace no more from the Lord. God gives grace to the humble, resist the proud. Don't we need God's grace to be able to endure? Absolutely. We have to, we see that it goes hand in hand. You have to be humble to receive grace. That continues. That's just not in the beginning when you're zealous and you start off on fire, then you start to dwindle. Or that we go through a season where it's so pressing and it's not feeling like the, the Lord has gone away and he's hiding his face as the scripture says that thou surely is a God that hides thyself, right? But that we continue to remain humble. Lord, I'm going to be patient and wait on you. Lord, I'm going to continue to walk in the way that you tell me to walk, right? Because we have to continue to be humble, to continue to receive his grace, to continue to love him, to continue to endure. And then so building up off of this lukewarm place, amen. Thank you, Jesus. It always comes down to the heart we know that. And we have to have all the balance of scriptures together, that we can't just override God knows my heart, and I don't have to listen to any of these other things. I don't have to receive chastisement. I don't need rebuke, Right? Oh, we all get rebuked from the Lord. Believe that. All of us get rebuked from the Lord. All of us have not made it to a 100% understanding of certain things, especially when we're starting out. Hallelujah. And God deals with us. Amen. In our walk with Him, in our marriages with husband and wife, with raising our children, with being in the body of Christ, with all of these things. And there's so many different areas, so many different uh, balances to go to the gym or not, to go to over here or not. 
to wear these type of shoes or not, right? All these things. Well, we have to seek. We got to put this thing into what does God really want and see, and let it be edified or let it be let it be clarified by the Word of God. Why that we test the Spirit? That my Spirit over here is so zealous that it's overriding, right? And I'm condemning the just. God forbid. Or I'm not over here justifying the wicked because both are an abomination, right? We have to have the Spirit of God lead us in all things, Amen. Thank you, Jesus. But in this lukewarm place, Amen that many we could see as we dig into the scriptures, many are many are at. Hallelujah. When we see that we are not receiving chastisement from the Lord, let that be a heart check yes. unto us. Am I really on fire for you still? Mm -hmm. Because the lukewarm, partial cold heart for Jesus, because it's the heart, it's the love for the heart being on fire. And then the faith with works, right? Everything come to bind, combined. If I'm resisting chastisement and rebuke from the Lord and correction, again from leadership, and so on and so forth, as I keep saying, I need to look at myself, what's going on within myself that I'm not receiving this chastisement? Mm -hmm. What am I holding on to? What am I being so right in my own eyes? God forbid and then what is going on within myself? Is it a hurt? Is it an offense? Is it something that I, I, I heard and it was so cutting to the core, but I never went and spoke to my sister or that brother or that leader, right? I never went and cleared it up. If it be so, humble yourself, be zealous, therefore, and repent and go get it right. Go get it right that you receive whatever it is that the Lord may be putting on you that you're struggling with. Amen. Why? that you are now humbling yourself continually to be able to receive grace, to be able to grow from that place. Amen? Amen. And, and, and this is the truth of the word of God, that this is the church that's on fire, that there's uncomfortable times. Right. God says to be hot or cold. What is hot? Hot's fire. It's flaming hot. There's going to be times where it's uncomfortable in the church of God, where we have to have, dis dis there's going to be some disagreements at times. I may not see it that way as you do. Well, I don't care what I see or you see. Let's see what he sees, and let's go from there. Amen. And we have to meet in together. How can two walk together except they be in agreement with what thus said the Lord? Amen. Not what, what you think or what I think. Because if it comes down to it, all of us in our flesh and our walks would lower the standard, would not be on fire the way that God wants us to be, and living in sound doctrine as he requires us to live in. He says we have to, we have to live in and abide in some doctrine, the apostles' doctrine. All of us in some form or fashion would get what? Lukewarm. Because it's easier. Just truth be told, it's easier. It's easier, amen? But nevertheless, we got to continue to have this love for God. we got to receive His grace. We have to remain humble. When disagreements come, we need to speak on them. Yes, it's going to be uncomfortable. Yes, this isn't the, the church, right? The, 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 the lukewarm doesn't really operate this way. The lukewarm doesn't really hold to the standard in the scriptures of what does of the Lord. The lukewarm doesn't have the order in the house of God because maintaining the order is maintaining the fire. Just like the priest had to maintain the fire upon the altar, to maintain that fire is the same thing today upon our altar, upon our life, upon our our living sacrifice we have to maintain this fire and there's labor with it there's times of sacrifice with it there's times where it's uncomfortable I don't feel like going this way today Lord I don't feel like waking up and denying myself today I don't feel like going and having this awkward conversation with so-and-so today I don't feel like going and getting rebuked from pastor today because of my belief that I had my whole life now is getting rebuked by you Lord and I see it coming through the man of God and I don't feel nevertheless deny yourself Amen. Keep the fire on the altar. It's a commandment. Amen. You don't want to live this way? You don't want to have uncomfortable times? Well, the Lord says you need to be hot or cold. Amen. If we think that we can be hot and not have disagreements in times where it feels like we're setting in the fire, even in the midst of the saints, that's not the right, that's not the right walk. The flesh is always going to want to run from the flames of being on fire for the Lord. Yeah. Because it comes back. If you're on fire, God says right here, Revelation 3.19, As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten, be zealous therefore, and repent. Yes. The lukewarm will go and say, that's too much, this, that, the other. The order has been drifted away from. They're lukewarm. They think that they have everything. They're all good. But God says you're getting blind, you're miserable, you're wretched, and you're naked, and you don't even know it. 
But in their own eyes, they think everything is all well. They're still lifting up songs and hymns. They're still praising unto the Lord. They're still thanking Jesus, right? They're, this is the church. This isn't the world. This is the church in Laodicea. These are saints of God that God is coming and rebuking and chastening, amen? amen. So there's going to be uncomfortable times in the body of Christ. There's uncomfortable times if you take even just leadership in the body out, just between you and the Lord. Get real. There's uncomfortable times with Jesus. That he says to come up higher and you don't want to. He says to put down that relaxing video game or Facebook or TV show that you're used to. That's lawful, but he says, put it down, go sacrifice your time, and go seek my face. It's uncomfortable. Lord, I've been laboring all week, and, 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 but it's like, but heart check. Right. Heart check, do you love me? You said it all week. You've been praying to me all week. You've been asking for prayers and breakthrough all week, but now I want some time from you, which is only an hour for real. Amen. And yes, I'm coming to you when you're weak, when you're tired, when you don't feel like doing it. It's a heart check, right? And then even the Lord, and then you try to resist the spirit and say, well, I'm just going to, I'll do it tomorrow. And then God will say, well, see, where's your, where's your love? Where's your heart? Where's your fire? you got to have the fire on the altar within you and always praying unto the Lord and seeking my face. Always. It's a commandment. You start to get lukewarm. I'm going to show, right? He'll show you. You're starting to get lukewarm. He'll show you. Your flame's dwindling. Amen. You're barely alive. You're barely still lit. I'm trying to keep you on fire. It's going to take the pressing and the shaking of the flesh and the crushing of your flesh to keep the flame on fire. Why? Because when you crush the flesh, the oil of the olive, you crush the flesh of the olive, the oil comes out. What is the oil? The oil would go into the manure to keep the flame lit, right? You've got to have oil in your lamp to keep going. Those ten virgins, even as Elder Joseph, I believe, was laboring recently, they were ten virgins. They were ten pure, living so you even to the, into the church, right? But only half of them had that oil that was within their lamp to keep going. It feels uncomfortable. It's a requirement to stay on fire for the Lord. It's a good chastisement from the Lord. Amen. But we can individually, just with our relationship with God, come to a place where we don't receive his chastisement. First with him. Second with leadership. And within the body, with the council, right. within the church of God. But is that being on fire? Yeah. Truthfully, no. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. That's not being on fire. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. That's not being on fire. Being on fire for the Lord isn't always a speaking in tongues up on a, up on a pedestal, always look at me and such things. Everything is all well. The fire with Jesus comes with persecution, tribulation. Yes, we know those things, but what about the things of the disagreements in the church? Stand in the fire, work it out, because Satan came right in the midst of the saints, or the, the, the disciples, right? Came right in the midst of them and came and entered right into Judas' heart. The same devil, same with Jesus manifested in the flesh, his disciples on this earth, how much are we? He went straight to, to the Lord. You think he's not going to come straight to the disciples? Come straight even try to come in between leadership? Amen. None of us are exempt. Amen. None of us has gotten to a place where, oh, I'm good. Right? Oh, maybe if I just fall back and come over here, I won't get, I won't, I won't have to be like that. No, God says you gotta be in the mix, you gotta be a part of the body, you gotta be tight, uh, tightly joined together, perfectly joined together, and y'all are gonna have to move this way. Work it out, hallelujah, as God and the Spirit of God be the source of hope and the source of belief and truth, which he is. And we all abide with it, right? Mm -hmm. Some may have the understanding, don't need to repent from whatever the topic may be. Others may have a disagreement and a misunderstanding nevertheless. Whether it's this person or that person, it don't matter. Whether they've been 30 years in the Lord or three months in the Lord, it don't matter. Because the three-month-old babe can have an understanding that God gave them that the 30-year-old in Christ don't have. It don't matter. Right. Humble has to be on humble. Right. Humble has to be in humble and an equal balance. Right. If someone starts to judge, well, well, I've been in the Lord for so long and they don't know this and that, the other third, well... I'm seeing the fruit of pride coming out. I'm seeing right. the fruit of proudness out of your heart and out of the heart, the abundance of the mouth speak. Yeah. I'm seeing it. You may not even say it, but I'm seeing it in the actions. And the actions speak louder than words as the word of God says that they profess that they love me. They're, my name is on their lips, but their heart is far from me. Right. Because the heart will get chastised. Yes. Your heart, but it's for the good. Amen. What is this all about? Staying on fire for Jesus. Not pulling away from the church. That's the church of Jesus. How many people have come to the church and said, this is the church of God. Right. This is the church of Jesus. This is the power of God. I'm seeing works of Jesus that I've yearned to see in the mix. This is the church. Amen. Start off on fire, then something, where are they at? Right. 
Right. Where have they gone? Disagreements have come up. Right. Different spirits have come in between. And the operation, the order has not been met. Amen. I'm not saying with all, but with some. Right. The order has to be maintained for the preservation of the soul. That's right. But this is the uncomfortable part of the church. Well, I, I, I don't like to have uncomfortable talks and conversations. Well, why not? Amen. Because if we're working at our own salvation of fear and trembling, if it's going to be growth, we're going to have to have these times. Amen. Do you think the pastor wants to always put down the... Do you think the pastor wants to have an uncomfortable conversation? Right. No. The flesh of the pastor don't want to do it. The flesh of the saint don't want to do it. But nevertheless, we got to continue to be on fire, y'all. Amen. We have to continue to walk in the order of Jesus. We have to continue to keep our flames lit within and with all collectively. Amen. And so that's the message for today's word, amen, that we be on fire for the Lord. There's going to be disagreements, right? There's going to be times where we feel weak and others look strong. It don't matter. Keep your eyes on Jesus and iron will sharpen iron. Hallelujah. That's what the body is here for, amen, that we all may make it in. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. But it takes being humble to continue to receive grace. Why? Amen. As the youth conference has gone forth this weekend, glory to God for the word, that endurance is the key. Amen. How do we think we're going to be able to endure this walk without the grace of God? Right. That ain't going to happen. Right. Well, so I'm going to I'm going to remain I'm going to remain enduring by the grace of God. Okay, well, are you ready to get rebuked and chastised? Right. Well, I'm going to have to get humble to receive that. Well, yeah, you're going to have to remain on your walk. You get corrected again. He's going to do it. You on your walk. You're going to get corrected. Are you going to remain humble? If you stop remaining humble, you get out of order, God can restrain his grace from you, and you will not endure. You'll think you are, but you actually be blind, wretched, and miserable. Right. Amen? But God forbid that that happen. This is the zealous of God, right? To be zealous and repent. Not to be zealous and to go off and do your own thing. To be zealous and go off and find this and find that. When God has appointed you into his church, be zealous and and repent yeah. be zealous remains remaining humble yeah. but zealousy has overread humility right. i'm so zealous i know the word i got so much understanding i've been with the lord so i've seen the third heaven open up i'm so sold out for jesus but then here comes the check and there's no humility right. the humility you being humble has to be matched with being zealous right. For real, it does. It has to match. Otherwise, it could come into a pride issue, proud in heart. And this is how people get pulled away, amen, by the devil. Because who is pride from Lucifer? Amen. And he's aiming at people that will have a great zealousy. Ooh, they're zealed out. They're zealed out. Okay, they're on fire. Okay, let me see if I can cause just a small little thing. Let me see if I can pull them away just to get get out the mix of the church right. and lure them away over here with all that zeal. Right. They're going to have so much zeal, they're going to start their own church. They're going to start their own thing. They're going to do their own thing. And it's going to be so zealed out, Acts 2.38, all that understanding, all that. But yet they'll have pride and that iniquity that's found within them. They're not even going to make it in. That's, right. that's scary. Yeah. You can have the understanding, the standard, the this, that. Maybe you can memorize all the scripture and then some. Yeah. You can go into some other books and memorize all that. And this, that, and the secular history. You can have all the knowledge. And that knowledge starts to puff it up. But you have that proud and iniquity within you. You won't even make it in. This is falling in love with Jesus. But let's remain in love with Jesus. Amen. amen. Lord willing, we'll get through the word. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Um, I'm going to actually shoot over. This was, this was, I believe, last week's discipleship. Or it was the recent one, right? It was about a wicked heart. And so what is a wicked heart? We're, gonna, we're just going to see what the scripture speaks again today, amen. As many people may be online that I don't plug into the discipleship or haven't heard it, amen. I'm going to speak the word. Hebrews chapter 3, starting at verse 12, I'm sorry, 7. Hebrews chapter 3, starting at verse 7. We've already kind of, the Lord's already been showing what is a wicked heart, lukewarm, obviously, right? But unbelief comes right in the mix of all this, right? Well, I don't believe I need to do that. I don't believe I have to walk that way and be orderly. I can be disorderly. Well, don't you know the Word of God tells you to withdraw from brothers that walk disorderly? Right. The Word of God instructs the church of Jesus Christ to pull away 
from those who walk disorderly and do not receive chastisement. They maintain disorder while we're trying to maintain order. Right. That unbelief of scripture of doing that and the, and, the, and the word of God, what does God say about that? It's a wicked heart. Hebrews 3, 7, Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost said, Today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts. Right? If you feel the Lord showing you you've gotten lukewarm, you've, you've slid away, and you're not to the place, amen, for any of us. It don't matter if you're, you're a pastor. The Lord corrects everyone. Amen? Amen. Humble yourself, repent, and be zealous, and have the good works. Amen. Harden not your hearts as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness. Right? Back with Israel. When your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years, wherefore I was grieved with that generation, and said, They do always error in their hearts, and they have not known my ways. The heart is more deceitful and above all, desperately wicked, who can know it, right? They, you can get to a place that God's delivered you out of Egypt, done many wonderful works, 40 years. And you could be like the Israelites that were erring always in their heart. Mm -hmm. So you're telling me, I could see the tabernacle of God, the, part, the, the, the pillar of fire, the pillar of the cloud of smoke coming down, right? I could see all this. I could see the glory of Moses talking to God up on the mountain. I could see it going on for 40 days. Hallelujah. I could see him come down with the tablets. Hallelujah. I could see him do all this work and his face shining of the glory and always continue on for 40 years and still error in your heart. The scripture says, yes, right. you can get to that place where you see so much of God around you, but you're always erring in your heart. How? Unbelief. So I swear on my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Take heed, therefore, I'm sorry, take heed, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief. God says this is an evil heart of unbelief. We can take this so many ways. But ultimately, what do we want to stick with? The word of God, doctrine, teaching. Well, I don't believe that. I don't have to hold on to that, right? Or I'm so zealous on this area, y'all are in, in, in rebuke. But yet God says, well, that's not an equal balance. Right. This is such a, I want to say, a, 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 a straight and narrow walk that any man that is to be preaching the word of God first coming to myself, must remain humble, always seeking the Lord and fear and reverence of the Lord. Because if you add a burden unto the people that they're not a yoke, that they're not able to carry, That's right. you're, and, and you're, you're, you're doing too much out of a pastor's zeal, oh, y'all can't wear Nike, y'all can't wear this and doing that and doing that, and condemning the saint and you're shedding innocent blood, you're making doctrines out of men and all these things, right. but yet also there is a standard of God and to pull away from paganism, to pull away from occultic ties and all these things, there's a balance to this thing. Right. You could do too much on either or. And God rebuke you for either or. You justify the wicked, you're an abom the abomination. But if you are condemning the just, he says, you're an abomination. Right. This is what goes on in the house of the Lord that has the understanding and the truth and sound doctrine that you can have such a zeal that you come to a place that you start to condemn the just. Right. The Lord has rebuked me on this. Right out. Who hasn't been rebuked? Amen. I've been rebuked several times by the Lord, and I love it. Amen. Does it feel good? No. It doesn't. It does not feel good. It doesn't feel good to say I was wrong. But nevertheless, let pride and evil be binded in Jesus' name. Right. Let myself die, and let the Spirit of God reign through me. Right. And so, having so much zeal, condemning the just, we have to have this balance. Hallelujah. What is the balance? Hallelujah. I didn't plan on going this way. Lord Jesus, you don't. Thank you, Jesus. I'm just going to speak on one thing. Thank you, Jesus. I believe I'm going to Leviticus 7.12. Leviticus 7.12. Thank you, Jesus. Let's speak on a topic, amen, that we can clarify just on one, but we see the balance that needs to be put together. Okay, hallelujah. And this is what the Lord was just showing me. I know there's much of a deeper understanding to this. And this can go on a whole teaching, a whole doctrine for two hours, ten hours, however long the Lord will. I'm just going to touch on it as I'm feeling that. 
Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So we, 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 we've seen, right? We've heard. We come to the understanding that birthdays were of the world. They're not of really Jesus. We look in the scripture. This, we see all the scripture, how birthday wasn't even mentioned until Pharaoh and so forth. And Herod, Pharaoh, so they celebrated it. Jesus really didn't celebrate his birthday, neither did the apostles, the prophets, and so on and so forth. We look at, even into, I've gone to the, the, the Church of Satan's website, you see it right there. They say, yep, that's our number one day, so on and so forth. So the Lord says to pull away, to touch not, handle not the unclean thing, amen? To what? Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Let me get the scripture real quick. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. What is what is what is what is that though? What is that? Ezekiel 44, 23. And they shall teach my people the difference between the holy and profane. This is leadership. This is the pastor. This is the order of God. This is the Spirit of God working through different men. Amen. Between holy and profane. What God accepts and is clean and what is not clean. He says, touch not, taste not the unclean thing. Amen. All the way back in the garden with Adam and Eve, don't even touch the apple. Don't touch the fruit. Don't touch the tree that God said not to, let alone even eat of it. And cause them to discern between the unclean and the clean. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. And in controversy, they shall stand in judgment and they shall judge it according to my judgments. And they shall keep my laws and my statutes and all mine assemblies, meaning all churches, right? All congregations, even nowadays, amen. And here in OCOJ Church, amen, all have the same standard, the same understanding, which is the order of God. Amen. We can have zeal, right, that seems hard, far above more than others, but all, the, all of it has to be balanced out with Jesus. Amen. And they shall hold my Sabbath, as the scripture says, amen. But to teach the people to put a difference between the clean and the unclean thing. Amen. So we see. Can you repeat that? Ezekiel. Um, Ezekiel 40. I'm sorry. Ezekiel 44. Chap, um, chapter 44, uh, verse 23 and 24. Mm -hmm. And so there's a difference to be put between clean and unclean, holy and unholy. Old Testament, New Testament, same thing. Birthdays come up. We abstain from it. We preach against it. Amen. We don't even want to acknowledge the day. Right. It's this, let's apply this judgment to Halloween. Right. Do we even open up our doors for real? Should we be even entertaining? Should we even put candy out on the doorstep, but we're really not dressing up and doing all that? Do we want to play the lukewarm middle ground with these things? Right. No. What do we do? God just says abstain from all appearance of evil. Right. Abstain means to completely pull away. So I'm not going to leave a... a it may, may not be a pumpkin, but it'll be a basket and have some candy in it. I'm not even going to do that. It's doing some weird thing. You start looking into it, pretending to the devil's, devil's kingdom. I'm going to abstain from it. No candy, no door opening, no none of those things, right? I'm not even going to acknowledge the day. Right. I'm obviously not going to call it Hallelujah Night and try to justify the wicked. Amen. Right? And I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm not going to have any part in it at all. Same thing with birthdays, right? I'm just going to pull away from it. I'm not going to acknowledge it. Amen. Period. I'm just not. There's no need for it. You know, praise the Lord. It's another day. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you. I'm not going to esteem that day. Why? It's rooted in self-worship. We look in the scriptures. There's the whole doctrine, amen, that's been preached and taught through main campus, through, I'm sure, majority of campuses, but on here, amen, you could go down and find birthdays, amen, and labored into it by the, by the Spirit of God. Now, let's apply honoring one, right? The scripture, I don't have chapter and verse, amen, but scripture talks about honoring those who, who are above you, right? To honor pastor, honor leadership. That's Bible. You don't give glory to the flesh. You don't put them up on a pedestal and worship them as a king. Right. But you honor them, right? And, and, for, and for things that are lawful, things that are good, things that are holy, things that are, are, are righteous, and someone going and, and, and getting things together, and let's say as, as, as it is for even a graduation, right? A graduation comes... There's, a, there's been an achievement by the grace of God that there was a graduation, that saints came out, they got their the, the diploma, and they're going on in life, right? Maybe seeking college, whatever the, the will of the Lord is for that individual, amen? But to have a getting together and having some cake, having some food, amen, and gathering together, amen, and celebrating that, there's no paganism tied to it. It's not out of Satan's kingdom, right? I'm not worshiping a false god. 
but I'm honoring and I'm giving glory unto God and I'm honoring, hallelujah, amen, someone that just labored and went through extensively and so on and so forth, what was righteous and right in God's eyes, amen, which I'm sure there was times they were weak, sometimes they wanted to give up, they didn't want to do homework, they didn't want to keep pressing in, they didn't want to do what was right, because why? It's easier, obviously, I can speak for myself, to drop out, sell dope, and go make an easy income, which will take your life ultimately in Satan's kingdom, right? So we honor those who God says to honor in, in such ways, honor your wife. Right. right? The Bible says, honor your wife as unto the weaker vessel. Hallelujah. I can now have, I can go into and have a celebrate, uh, uh, I can go and have and take my wife out on our anniversary. anniversary. Thank you, Jesus. You know, that's my rib. She knows me. I can take my wife out, honor my wife. It's not rooted in the paganism day. I'm not going to put candles on. I'm not going to do all these little things, right, that are, that are ritualistic in certain ways that tie to the birthday and to the, uh, the, the, the moon goddess, where they would bake up cakes to the moon goddess and offer them up in a, in a way that the pagans did. Right. But if it's not of them, it's, it's clean, it's of God to honor my wife, amen, in this form and fashion way, to take her out to eat. Would you like dessert? Yeah, my wife likes chocolate cake. I'm going to get her a piece of chocolate cake. Do I want some stuff all screwed up? Do I want candles? No, I don't want all, No, just, just a piece of cake's fine. You know, maybe put I love you on the plate. Something simple. Right. That's legal. That's just. That's okay. That's honoring my wife. I'm not giving glory into the flesh and esteeming her and doing these such things and, and not on a date and a time that's with the occult and, right. and with a, a pagan day. Right. All is well. Right. Honor is, is, is just and is good in God's eyesight. He says to even do it. So when you apply it in its right place, in its right balance, we can't have birthdays come over here and consume, well, you got a piece of cake and what are you doing? You're esteeming your wife and you're, you're, you're taking this too far. The, the, the man of God may have, have, have graduated Right, we could see this thing. The balance has to be right that you're not shedding innocent blood Amen, right? that God hates. Amen. I can't have my zeal so zealed out that if you even buy a cake, you're going to hell. Amen. Amen. <laughs> literally, literally, this is the place it could get to. Right. Oh, they were offered up to Queen Ashtaroth and she was the moon goddess, and they baked cakes and they offered up incense and all these such things. Yeah, that's what's in the doctrine, hallelujah, even for the pagan birthday and all these such things. Yeah, that's all tied in. The, the occult, the wicked children of the devil do those things. But then the Lord even just brought me to one simple place. Simple. Leviticus 7, 12. And this is in the sacrificial system. The laws being delivered, right? Even to Moses and to the Levites and to Aaron and everything being established. The Lord just took me right here. Leviticus 7, 12. If he offer it for a thanksgiving, then he shall offer with the sacrifice of thanksgiving unleavened cakes mingled with oil. Amen. Mingled with oil and unleavened wafers anointed with oil and cakes mingled with oil of fine flour dry. And the Lord was ministering to me on this in this, in this topic that we're speaking of today. What's the whole point of this? The Lord wanted offerings of even cake. So is a cake bad? No. Well, obviously you want to have the right balance so you're not eating cake all the time, polluting the temple, right? And, and have all that, right? But in a cake of itself, if you were to have it, is it a sin? No. If you're getting to a place of gluttony and there's, and there's a, a, a lust over food, God could deal with you on that. Oh, yeah, and the flesh, you know, we got to crucify that thing. Glory to God. But the cake itself, no. Well, what about, he's saying that it's unleavened. Unleavened meaning no sin. What was the leaven of the Pharisees? Hypocrisy. Make sure there's no hypocrisy. Because if I go and say, y'all have cake, and y'all are esteeming a day and doing this, when the Bible says you can esteem a day higher than another, you just have to make sure it's not rooted in what the thing is unclean, right. tied to a wrong spirit. Have the right balance. Right. But if you say, oh no, y'all y'all done did something. You know, I seen Joshua with a cake over and his wife. And it looked like they were doing a ritual. And all these people were, oh, no, hey, let's, let's clear this up. This ain't no birthday celebration on the low. This ain't no taking. This is, let's talk about it, right? Let's talk, because this is the order, right? When you take you have an aunt, go to your brother, go to your sister. Right. Let's talk about it. Right. Let's go into the scripture. Let's seek order. And let's make sure that there's not condemning the just. Let's make sure I'm not really uh, in rebellion and doing some wicked thing, hiding it, right? Let's, let's clear it all on the table, all sides of it. But God says, let there be unleavened. Because if I say that y'all can't have a piece of cake because of the whole birthday thing and all that and Queen Asheroth and those cakes offered up to a false god, amen? 
But God right here even offered up, he had cakes offered up to him, Jesus, amen, amen. in Old Testament. But God says, make sure that the cake is unleavened. Amen. Make sure there's no hypocrisy in yourself. Because when you start to condemn the just, God will quickly show you you're a hypocrite. Mm -hmm. right. yes. It's happened to me. Right. Oh, very swiftly. So swiftly, I was speaking on a word, and I looked down at my shoes, and God says, look at you. <laughs> it was about Nikes, right? They made the whole hell shoe, 666, six, six, all that. And then they had the water walker, so they had one for Jesus and one for Satan. And I was just going, I'm like, man, this is so wicked. You know, the, 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 the name is after a false god and all this. And I'm like, right, I'm speaking on it. You know, we shouldn't even do this and do that. And it's like, man, you got to get right in the spirit of God and really seek this thing that you not justify the wicked. Yes, but you're not condemning the just. And that's so easy to do. It's so easy to do having a zeal for God. It's so easy to do in your own way, in your own understanding. But you have to be zealous and repent if you're doing this thing in a, un in a, in a false balance. That's an abomination. Amen. How dare we think that we're doing such a good thing unto God and, and putting a yoke on the saints that they can't even bear. Right. But God says, that's legal in my eyes. You're shedding innocent blood. You keep doing that. I'm going to handle you. Right. So much that you'll go to a place that's not even with me. Lord Jesus, help us. Why? Because that thing will spread to others and they'll start throwing it on others and others and others. Right. Right. And now it's making the church that's really in the truth, holding the standard of holiness, head covering, all that, right? That seems too much and legalistic. It starts making us that have the truth look like we're doing too much. And then some others, I don't even want to do none of that. Just give me Jesus. He knows my heart. I'm going to heaven. Hallelujah. I don't even need to get baptized. It's, you got to have this balance correct Amen. and maintain the balance. Amen. Amen. So what is it? God says, offer unleavened cakes unto him. Let us not have leaven of sin tied to a demonic day, self-worship, such things, right? Glory to God. You can esteem a day higher than another. Give honor to those who you to honor, as the scripture says. Honor your wife. You want to have a piece of cake, it's fine. Hallelujah. Don't get no weird ties to it, amen, that are of, of the devil and his kingdom. Amen. And also make sure that you're not condemning the just, that when God shows you, you're in hypocrisy. It happens. Because you can get to a place where you start looking on others' faults so much, you're living in hypocrisy. Right. And you probably don't even know it. For a certain time, you may not know it, but God will show you. God will show you. You'll be so zealed out. Oh, I'm not hypocritical. I got my walk. Perfect type. I got this. Y'all are wrong going to hell. I'm on this narrow path. But then God said, you are doing everything wrong in my eyes right now. Mm -hmm. Right? You, know, you may have some things right, but you're doing a lot wrong. And that wrong is actually way worse and, and, and overriding what you're doing good. I don't even see that for real. You're doing too much and you're shedding blood. Amen. So when we make sure that we have honor unto others, right, it's in a right balance that we don't get to uh, celebrate in Halloween. Because we pull away from those things. It's unclean. Come out. Have a lot. Touch not. Taste not yet. When you have some cake unto the Lord, you're honoring something, a day you're esteeming that's legal and just, make sure it doesn't have sin attached to it. Make sure it doesn't have a, a false God worship attached to it, right? Mm -hmm. Make sure you don't have what? Leaven, which is hypocrisy, attached to it. Mm -hmm. That I can go and take my wife out and have a piece of cake, and I'm good, but I'm going to go and condemn someone that, that, that graduated or whatever other scenario, right? They, they just what? They just uh, bought a new home. They just bought a new home. It's a nice new home. They're having some saints over. And then we even went to Pastor Kip's house. There was some cake on the table. After one of the assemblies, that was like 2 or 3 in the morning, we all went. There was cakes on the table. So when we have a gathering, right, when we're there just, just, just even honoring each other in the presence of each other, right, and, and giving God glory for being body of Christ, me over here eating my cake, you know, looking on my phone, condemning those over there that are, that are right as well. What I'm getting to is the hypocrisy. Amen. Let not there be hypocrisy in our lives. Amen. Amen. Ultimately, thank you, Jesus. Amen. So that, that's a whole other teaching, a whole other story, much more scripture. Amen. But Lord knows. Amen. I thank God for even just this one scripture of speaking on this, of having unleavened cakes offered up to him. Amen. And let's not, hallelujah, as the devil would try to make the church that's holding the standard, holding the truth, abiding in his own doctrine. He wants us to look so zealed out and so shedding innocent blood that people don't even want to come to us. Right. Right. This is where the lukewarm church is thriving. Yes, they do error in their own heart and they don't want to receive it. Yep, that's that too. But Satan in his warfare wants the church to look like, oh, 
legalistic, that whole legal, legal, legalistic, you know, it's like chiming off. But when you are on fire, you're zealous, you receive chastisement, and you grow in the Lord. Amen? That I can't be condemning brother that has some Nike shoes on, but yet then I got my van slippers on that have checkerboards for Freemasonry and all that other stuff. Right. I can't be in that, so Lord, what's the right balance? What is just? What do you accept in, the, in thy sight, right? We're in the world, but we're not of the world. Right. Hallelujah. Yes. You get down to it, you're not going to be able to buy no nothing from the, you want to get down to it? The pedophiles that operate and control a majority of all the stuff that we buy, purchase the cars, the homosexuality, right. hallelujah, the abominations, right. the witchcraft and Luciferians that, 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 that kill people and drink blood and do these things, and then we go and buy from these merchants and they've all drinking of the cup of her wrath of fornication as it speaks in Revelations. You won't be able to, you'll have to go and do your own thing for real and live out in the hills, amen, even as the Mennonites do. Amen? No cars, no engine. You have all that. You start getting into a whole different thing. And they still praise Jesus. They have the Bible. They have the scripture. But And they have the scriptures to justify how they live. But what about the others that have to have the whole balance? Amen? You cannot condemn someone for driving a Honda minivan. Amen? Because it has an engine. Amen. I can't condemn my boss that drives a Tesla, although I wouldn't ever buy a Tesla and I don't like how, uh, what, what, what some things are looking to be like, how that, that knowledge is coming to, to Elon Musk, right? I don't agree with that such thing, nevertheless. I can't condemn him for the such thing. Let me get off the topic, amen. That was not the word for the day, really. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So falling in love with Jesus Christ, amen. We talked about issues so far that come within the church. Well, let's continue to grow in love with Jesus. Let us put aside every weight that would try to hold us down from up, growing in love with Jesus. Mark 12, 29 through 31. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And Jesus answered him, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, and all thy might. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. All I should. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this. Thou shalt love thy neighbor, thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. Another part of the scriptures, it talks about treat others as how you want to be treated. Right? Treat others of how you want to be treated. Thank you, Jesus. John 14, 14. I'm sorry. I think I have, I have it wrong right there. John 14, 15. If you love me, keep my commandments. Right underneath that, verse 21. He that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. Well, look how that all just came with what was saying thus, thus far, even of keeping the order, keeping the instruction, going to your brother, working out these things, right? And, and maintaining a healthy balance of what is condemned in God's eyes and what is justified in God. All of this, right? You're going you're gonna to keep his commandments. You're going to walk in this way when it's uncomfortable. You're going to walk in this way when you feel like, oh, the whole church may come against you because of what you thought. Well, nevertheless, maintain the order that you love Jesus. Amen. If you truly love Jesus, you're going to walk in these uncomfortable times. Amen. You're going to get rebuked even from the whole church if it is. Right? When, what happens when that order, when I believe it was Paul writing to the church that says you need, to, you need to bring them out and you need to call out the sin. If any sin, bring them out to the congregation and call it out that they would be, what a shame. No one wants to be called out in church and be brought up to the front and that others may fear and be ashamed and that they'd be ashamed of the sin, right? And that others have the fear of that sin fall up or not to sin, right? That they have the fear and reverence of the Lord and be rekindled in that area again because of the sin. Like no one wants to go through those things. But what loving Jesus will keep you in that place. Right. Loving Jesus will say, you know what? Y'all, this is my time to repent. You know, this is my time, right? Lord Jesus, I grow from and I receive the grace of God. Amen. And continuing on. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and will manifest myself to him. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. I'm just going to keep going down. Samuel 13, 14. But now thy kingdom shall not continue. The Lord hath, set, hath sought him a man after his own heart. And the Lord hath commanded him to be captain over his people. Yep. The Lord will find a man, give him a heart after him, 
and will set him leader over the people, over the flock, over the sheep, to maintain the love of God, the fire, the order, and all such things. Amen. Amen. Oh, that was First uh, Samuel thirteen, verse fourteen. Because thou hast not kept that which the Lord commanded thee. Amen. This is why there's leadership to maintain the order and the structure. Because it's very easy as the devil wants for the order to get broken, to be misrepresented, to be mishandled, to be falsely unbalanced. And that it doesn't continue to go. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Let's look at a few things, amen. There is much more scripture, but we'll just we'll, we'll touch on a few. We gotta remain humble, amen. We look even as as David, right? Psalm 62, verses 9 through 10. Surely men of low degree are vanity, and men of high degree are a lie. To be laid in the balance, they are altogether lighter than vanity. Do not trust in oppression, and become not vain in robbery. If riches increase, set not your heart upon them. Amen? Even as the rich young ruler came and said, I've kept all these things since my youth, what do I lack? And the Lord said, if you be perfect, sell everything that you have, give unto the poor, and follow me. That was too much. He was not ready to see that and receive that word to give up what? The cares of this life. Amen? Because his heart was set up on them. What is our heart set up on that's keeping us to be completely on fire and sold out for the Lord? Amen? we got to be humble. Thank you, Jesus. Reverence unto the Lord. Psalms 34, verse 9. Fear the Lord, ye his saints. Thank you, Lord. There is no want to them that fear him, having this reverence, right? It comes to a place where, you know, I know the Lord knows what we need, first and foremost. He knows what we need before we even ask as the word of God says, and it's true. He knows all these things. But yet, when we have this place of deep reverence for the Lord, loving the Lord, we really start to feel the cares of this world dissipate and, and disintegrate. We start to feel the things that were weighing us down and stressing us out in the physical realm. When we get into the spirit and have this reverence and just seek him even the more and meditate even throughout the day, they start to dwindle. It's not that big of a deal. Yeah, we still put our hands to in labor and get things done, but we have this place of reverence for the Lord and that we fear him. Amen? That we won't have this greedy gain of want. Right? But the lukewarm will fall to a place where they don't have this reverence. Obviously, then the love and all such things. This is lukewarm middle ground, right? Thank you, Jesus. But this will keep our fire on for him as well, having reverence for him, loving him, amen? Respectful even for the Lord, amen? Psalm 31, verse 9. Have mercy upon me, O Lord, for I am in trouble. My eye is consumed with grief. Yea, my soul and my belly. Lord, help me. Right, Lord, Lord, instead of coming to him any type of way of, of, of casting the thing towards the Lord, right, that we come to him, Lord, help me. I, I, I'm struggling with this. I'm struggling with that. Amen. I, I feel so much weight on this side of that. So I'm seeing these odds stacked against me, Lord Jesus. Right, instead of coming to him in the flesh, you know, and in and, and the, and the wrong spirit of trying to pray unto him, amen, that we would even speak things that, that are not of being respectful unto him. My right? God forbid, how dare you let this, you know, how dare, you know, you, how dare you take them from me and such things, right? That was such from me even when I was lost. Hallelujah. His mercy was still upon me. I wasn't respectful in the manner towards God, blaming him for things that I should not have blamed him for. Amen. Thank you, Jesus, but we remain uh, respectful unto the Lord, right? We see all these things, humble, reverence, respectful, continuing going down. It's the same thing in marriage. These same, quali these same uh, qualities and characteristics we must have in a healthy, in a healthy uh, marriage. If we lack these things in the physical, it will start to grow some unhealthy fruit. 
God forbid, but how much more in the spiritual with the Lord, right? And so trust in the Lord. Psalms 27, verse 1. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? Amen. Beautiful scripture. The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? This is trust in the Lord. This is, this is trust in the Lord with everything that we have. Everything, amen, even when the enemy rises up against us. Even when they come and try to, to lay their hands upon us. Still trust in him. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. Lord, if you're going to allow this to come upon me, even the apostles rejoiced, right? Paul rejoiced. Peter rejoiced when they would get stones thrown at him. When they get drug out of the city and they thought that they were for dead. When they would get cast into the prison and be chained up. Hallelujah. That they were counted worthy. Stephen, that he was counted worthy to suffer for the namesake of Christ. This trustful, as we spoke on earlier, at times will not feel comfortable. But how are we going to grow in love? How are we going to grow in trust? How are we going to grow the flames of our fire? If we don't get to these places, we'll never grow. Right. It's the same thing in the physical at a job. You don't want more extra. You want to be a manager, but you don't want extra tasks. You don't want to do extra time every day. You just want to do the same little normal thing and get in and out. Yeah, it's easier to the flesh. But it's more of a harder labor. You gotta do 30 more tasks a day. You gotta manage more people over here. You gotta do extra time every day. All these things that take more from you to have that thing, right? Of, of a different position, of a more income, of such things. Well, how much? It's the same in the spiritual. You wanna grow with God as He's saying you ought to grow. You gotta grow in Jesus. You gotta deny yourself. You gotta deny yourself and to grow. And we have to trust in Him. Even when we don't feel it. We don't see it the way maybe we may have been prophesied to us. Nevertheless, I'm trusting you, Lord. And all things are going to work out to those who love you, right? And fear you. Thank you, Jesus. Loving him. Psalms 18, verses 1 through 2. Thank you, Jesus. Psalm 18, 1 through 2. I will love thee, O Lord, my strength. Man, the Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my strength, and whom will I trust? My buckler, the horn of my salvation, right? The power of my salvation, and my high tower. He's everything, hallelujah, as we are to love him. Thank you, Jesus. And this trusting him is so good. This trusting him in times of areas where we feel like that, 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 that it's hard to, right? Thank you, Jesus. Let me find the scripture. Amen. Psalm 41, verse 11. By this I know that thou favorest me, because my enemy doth not triumph over me. Amen. Even speaking on this on a recent prayer call, amen. This scripture, thank you, Jesus. It's so powerful that when we feel like we're in a place where it's hard to trust God, why don't we go back over to here in Psalm 41, verse 11, amen, and that we see. How do we know that there's been favor of God upon our lives? First of all, as the scripture has said, well, continuing on, that our enemies have not triumphed over us. We're not in the grave. We're not in hell. We're still alive and we're living for God by the grace of God. Our enemy has not triumphed over us. This is how we know that God has his favor upon us. Glory to God. This is how we can continue to trust God in the hard times where it seems harder than ever before. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. But this is all loving God. All these things that we're speaking of, we have to continue to work on, to speak on, that it be in our mind and it go down in our heart that we can have it later when we may not have our word or someone to call or anything, such things, right? Thank you, Jesus. We love the Lord. We trust in him. Amen. Being devoted. Amen. It's Psalm chapter 5, verses 7 through 8. But as for me, I will come into thy house. But as for me, I will come into thy house, the house of the Lord. Devoted. Forsake not the assembling of your of yourselves together. If you love the this is this, I mean this these things you all on so many different levels, right? But speaking of this, if you love the Lord, you're gonna keep his instruction. You're going to what? Come into the house of the Lord. 
you're going to continue to come into the house of the Lord even when we don't feel like it. Amen? We're going to continue to come into the house of the Lord, not forsake the assembling of the saints. Where it's to a point now in the, in the social media time 2023 where it could just be Zoom all the time. And there's situations with saints scattered abroad, a part of the church here at OCOJ that don't have a campus to come to, don't, that don't have even physical saints nearby, or it's just them in their house, and glory to God for that. And they're plugging in still, though, on the Zooms. Right. They're plugging in still, though, on the live streams. Right. Because even though, well, they're not gathering together, they're not in the flesh, well, don't you know that's more of a sacrifice to them? Right. That they have to deny themselves not to go and have just another church down the road when there's 30,000 all over the place, right? You could just go and jump from church hop and do this and do that. But God says, I've given you church, I've given you leaders, submit unto them, seek, you know, and only eat from the table of life that is from here. Don't go eat other different t uh, uh, food sources, different tables, get contamination of hypocrisy and leaven in that bread. Amen. Stay here, sacrifice, right, the, 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 the sacrifice of having that physical, but continue to assemble in what I've given you, the Zooms, the live streams, right? Yes. But then there's the point where the people can get to, and it's easy to get to where you start disassociating, not logging in, not coming together, right? And that warfare is real. That warfare is so easy to slip into that to where you don't even chime in at all no more. You're not, you don't even know what's going on. You don't know where, well, I'm just assuming they're preaching the same thing. Well, how do you know that there wasn't a deeper understanding and revelation and even a, a, a broad revelation that was brought to in last week's Bible study? Amen. Except you had been chimed in, been brought in. Right. Continuing to assemble yourself with the saints. Right. This is loving the Lord. We can't look at just pleasing men, pleasing men, pleasing a pastor, pleasing sister or brother. Amen. Keep your eyes on Jesus. And Jesus says, you ought to do these things as unto me. This is being devoted, coming to the house of the Lord, doing it, the flesh don't feel like it, warfare, continuing the love of God, amen? In the multitude of thy mercy and in, the, in thy fear will I worship toward thy holy temple. Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteousness because of mine enemies. Make thy way straight before my face. This is what God will do when you remain devoted unto him. He will make uh, his ways known of righteousness, right? That because of the enemy that tries to rise up against us, that he preserves us, that we have favor from the Lord, amen? That the enemy doesn't triumph over us because we maintain walking in God's ways of righteousness. And that we don't go off into a false balance and all these such things, that the enemy has so much warfare and tactics upon each and every soul that he wants to try to contaminate to not enter in into the kingdom, amen? Thank you, Jesus. But God, when we maintain this order, he makes way the straight before our face known, Amen. That we are without an excuse and that we need him as a great shepherd. Amen. Recognition. Amen. Psalm chapter 8. Thank you, Jesus. Verses uh, 9 through 1. Let me validate that real quick. Hmm. Psalm 8, verse 9. And then Psalm 9, verse 1. So Psalm 8, verse 9. O, o Lord, our Lord, how excellent is thy name in all the earth. 9, 1. I will praise thee, O Lord, with my whole heart. I will show forth all thy marvelous works. Verse 2. I will be glad and rejoice in thee. I will sing praise to thy name, O thou most high. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Even right here, continue with the word. When my enemies are turned back, they shall fall and perish at thy presence. For thou hast maintained my right and my cause. Thou sattest in the throne, judging right. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. And it continues to go on such, a, such beautiful words. Amen. That this is maintaining the love of God. And God will do all these such things. Being devoted and then recognizing what? Recognizing here in uh, 8 9 that how excellent is thy name in all the earth. Thou hast made all things for you, for thy good pleasure. Amen? Recognizing, Lord, you, you made all these things. Right? We wake up, Lord, you made the trees, you made the birds, all the species, all these things. This is mind blowing. Hallelujah. Amen? And that God is faithful. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. God is faithful. So we ought to be faithful unto him. Amen. I'm just going to move a little bit faster. Obedient 
Amen. We ought to be obedient unto the Lord. Amen. Keeping the law. Observing it with our whole heart. Amen. Obeying is better than sacrifice. Amen. Having a repentant heart as God will chastise us and rebuke us and correct us. We have to have a repentant heart that is loving Jesus. Glory to God. I'm going to read this. Psalm 25, verse 7. Remember not the sins of my youth, nor my transgressions, according to thy mercy. Remember thou me for thy goodness sake, O Lord. Verse 11. For thy name's sake, O Lord, pardon my iniquity, for it is great. Verse 8. Good and upright is the Lord, therefore will he teach sinners in the way. Having all this in the balance with these few scriptures, that the Lord, amen, having a repentant heart, Lord, please forgive me. Remember not my sins, amen, let it be far from me, Lord Jesus. Heal me from this thing that I not do it again and hide your word in my heart. Amen. And so such things. And God will teach us that we're sinners to walk in the ways of truth and righteousness and put it clearly before our face. Amen. And to love Jesus is the same to obey his word. Amen. Because you can say that you love Jesus when it comes to the word and to the doctrine and instruction and truth and righteousness and holiness. God is saying, do you truly love me? God is saying, do you truly worship me as I say that you must worship me in spirit and in truth? God is saying that if you love me, keep my commandments. Me and my word are the same, and there's no difference between. Amen? 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10. And with all deceivableness, 2 Thess 2, 10. And with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. Deception comes to bring you into unrighteousness. Deception will deceive you that you don't need to upstand and hold the righteousness of God. When God said, except your righteousness exceed the scribes and the Pharisees, you shall in no ways enter into the kingdom of God. We got to know God's righteousness, have the right balance, not too much of, of, of killing people, shedding innocent blood, and not, right, being lukewarm or going cold. Thank you, Jesus, because it'll perish. You, you perish if you have, if you have that deceivable Deceivable teaching, that deceivable heart that's not loving Jesus for real, right? Because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. You have to love the truth. Amen. When the sword comes and cuts against you, Lord, I love you. My flesh does not like this. And I'm taking this chastisement. Lord, I love you. Amen. This is the word for today, loving the Lord. Amen. John 14, 6. Jesus said unto him, I am the way the truth, and the light. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Thank you, Jesus. What is the way to eternal life? As you say, the way, the truth, and the life. What is the way to eternal life? Everyone wants to make it to the third part, the eternal life, heaven. Everyone does. Even the devil worshipers want to go to a place that's not torment, willing, and weeping, and gnashing of teeth. They want to go to Summerland. They want to go to another dimension where they can just rule and reign and be their own God and do these things, right? Everyone wants to have eternal life, not eternal death. They don't want the body fit for damnation and destruction in the, in the resurrection of the dead for that damnation of, of resurrection, right? We want to make it into the resurrection of eternal life. Think just, well, it's simple. The truth. The truth will, will set you free. The truth will bring you into eternal life. It is the way. It's through Jesus. Amen. And God will show you as we sing the word. will make his known ways unto you. Amen. John 17, 17 says, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Sanctify meaning being set, set apart. Set apart meaning being on fire. Set apart meaning being, on, uh, being zealous for the Lord with good works. Yes. All this comes together that his word is truth. When you abide in his word and his word in you, when you're connected to the vine and, you're, and, and the vine is within you, when, you're, when you have the spirit of God and the spirit of God is within you, right? You're going to do the works of the Father. You're going to do the works of his will. You're going to do the works of Jesus for real. And when you grow in his word and see everything that he says, that fruit should start to be established. Even if you're ignorant at certain times, you repent from it, be zealous and get it in order. And that fruit will now start to become holiness, right? Amen. All these such things. Not being provocative in clothing. Not showing off the legs and, and, and all these such things. Not wearing things that are seducing and, and enticing to the flesh. That's fruit of the flesh. That's works of the flesh. Self-glorification. Glory of the flesh. 
God says, hide the shame of thy nakedness, right? That I do not appear. So on and so forth. But the word is true. Amen. This truth will set you free. John 1.14, the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Amen. This is the spirit of God. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father. Father. What was this? He was full of grace and truth. Just fixating on loving Jesus is to love this word of God and to, and to let this sore cut you and let him have his way. Amen. This is the love of God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. And this is one thing we've got to have resolved. Amen. There's so much scripture, but we're going to, I feel like wrapping up here. Amen. Psalm 26, 2 through 5. And then we got to have this heart in loving God and be prepared to be tested by the will of, the, by the will of God and the Spirit of God. Psalm 26, 2 through 5. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me. Try my reins and my heart. For thy loving kindness is before mine eyes, and I have walked in thy truth. Amen. I have not sat with vain persons, neither will I go in with disassemblers. I have hated the congregation of evildoers, and will not sit with the wicked. Glory to God. Amen. And then we have to have that balance right, right? You're in the world, you're not of it, right? You're to, you're to pull away, amen, from brothers or sisters that say they're in Christ, but are in fornication and idolatry and all these such things. God says to pull away and withdraw yourself, but not from all the fornicators and idolaters of the world, or else would you have to leave the earth. You wouldn't be able to live in this world, right? You have all the, all, all the things set before you in a balance. But the thing is here is that we got to have, Lord, try me, prove my heart that I stay on fire, that I remain humble, receive the chastisement, and I continue to walk in your truth. Amen. Amen. Walking in the word of the Lord and the maintaining the order and all such things, amen, is walk, working out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Your works will prove your heart that's with inside. Amen. amen. Because how could this be that, 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 well, it's true. How could it be But this happens? That the children of the devil will try to come into the church work in witchcraft, will put on modest apparel, a head covering, and say, praise the Lord, go and worship Jesus, even quote scripture, but yet they're actually full of the devil. And they're putting on an outward appearance. But yet then we look at even people that are not full of the devil, even have the Holy Ghost, say that they love Jesus, but their outward is not showing it. That's why Jesus said to the Pharisees, you must clean the inside of your cup that the outside must be clean. The first is the heart. And if your heart is getting right, is getting pricked, is saying, you know, the Lord's showing you need to come up higher and you need to abide in the truth and in his word, lean out on your own understanding, then great, that's the spirit of God. Take heed, amen, while the spirit of God is still yet striving with you to come into the whole truth of the word of God. Amen, amen that you would grasp onto him with love. This is loving Jesus. Amen. You can say that you love someone and the action is not me. Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. John chapter 5, verse 24. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen and amen. He that heareth my word and believeth on him that sent me, amen. This word, even the messenger of God that God was sent, amen. Even the son of God right here with Christ Jesus, right? That even the messengers that God will send will have eternal life. From the prophets to Jesus, amen, to the, the apostles. The messenger that God will send, you believe the word that's in the mouth that's coming from the word of God, from the spirit of God, amen. You will have eternal life. Amen. It's not enough just to say that we love the Lord, to worship Him in our own ways, in our own fashion and desires. Amen. And when we really get into it, the warfare that tries to rise up against the church of Jesus. Amen. That you can come and sing praise Jesus and, 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 and start to learn the Word of God, 
but there's so much intricate warfare that's, that God exposes, that Satan tries to creep into the body of Christ, that tries to contaminate us. But God is exposing and showing us how to handle this balance perfectly and just. How to continue to abide in his word and his word in us. How to keep the fire on our altar and that it never burn out. Amen. How to forgive those that, that persecute us. That, 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 that mock us, ridicule us, right? That speak all manner of evil against us, right? Accusation, accusations will be set against the church of Jesus. Accusations were set against the Son of God himself by the Jews. Accusations will come. Make sure when they, when they accuse that it comes back false. When they accuse, the truth has to be said. And that we have to abide in that truth. Amen. Amen? Yes. When the accusations come against any of us in the body of Christ, make sure that the accusation is false. Amen? When God deals with us on a certain area that the accusation could be true, simple. Repent, grow from it, and go from there. Amen. Very simple. Don't make it too hard, but pride will try to rise up and make it very hard. Amen? Right. But nevertheless, God's spirit is greater than Satan and all of his kingdom. Amen? God just wants us to remain humble and in love with him. Therefore, we find the grace of God. We inherit the eternal kingdom. And this is where God wants us to abide in. Amen. So I praise God. Amen. Just for the word that went forth today. Amen. I praise God. Amen. That there's a just balance. Amen. I praise God that we don't have to go hide out in a hole on the middle of the world. Not buy from any merchant in the world because they're fornicators, they're idolaters and such things. Amen. That everything comes together. That we can still have a blessing in life here and prosper even as our souls prosper and not be in condemnation. Let us grow an understanding of that and seek counsel with God and with the leaders that we all come to the full agreement of what thus said the Lord. Amen. Amen. I praise God for everyone in the house today. Amen. Everyone that may be online hearing the word. And I praise God for what he's doing in all of our lives. Amen. Yes. And I pray that there be no evil heart in any of us of unbelief. Amen. I praise God that the Lord even was taking me on this teaching amen, of, 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 of showing me of a wicked heart of unbelief. And that message ever since going, it was just starting off on the Zooms. We did like Wednesday night Zooms or something, right? A few of us, through the brothers, and we were doing it in the beginning of OCOJ, Arizona. And it was so powerful so many times, and that, that word never left me. Mm -hmm. and, and even God would bring that word to me when my heart would try to, or someone would try to come upon me to make me not believe God. He's, he would bring that message back. Son, that's an evil heart. If you start to disbelieve me, you have an unbelieving heart in what I can do for you and what I will continue to do for you. That's an evil heart, says the word of God. Amen. That was Hebrews 3, 7 through 12. Amen. Thank you. We, we began off in that scripture earlier. Let that not be in us. Let us believe in the word of God and our faith and our works match. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you all. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus.